Good morning, biologists. Well, it's Sunday morning here, but I'm not sure uh, when you're watching this. But nonetheless, uh, welcome to Movement in the Cell. We are going to be talking about Learning Target 2, which is I can explain passive transport across the membrane, including diffusion, osmosis, and facilitated diffusion. Uh, make sure, along with watching this and taking your notes, that you're also reading section 3.4 in your textbook, page 81 to 83. Short little section. So cells are always having to move things in and out of um, themselves, transporting substances, importing, exporting, and if every single time they had to move something across their membrane, if it took energy, our cells would require way more energy than we can produce through our mitochondria. So luckily, many of these molecules move through passive transport. So passive transport is movement across the cell membrane that does not require energy. Um, that means it's going to go from an area where there's a lot of it to where there is a little of it. And if that's happening, it's just flowing down the concentration gradient, does not require energy. So we're going to talk about diffusion, which is basically just random particle motion. Osmosis is the specific type of diffusion of water. So remember, osmosis is diffusion of water. And facilitated diffusion, facilitates means to make easier or to help. So facilitated, oops, make easier. Uh, facilitated diffusion is going to still be diffusion. It has the word diffusion in it. Students usually um, mix this up a little bit and for some reason think that it requires energy just because I think it's a more complicated word. But more on that in a little bit. All right, so in order to have diffusion occur, we have to have what's called a concentration gradient. Concentration gradient means that you have more of something on one side and less of it on the other side. So if we just go with, let's say, this is our semi-permeable semi membrane, um, and on this side we have a lot of these little particles or little dots, whatever they are. And over here, we have a few of them. We have a concentration gradient set up. This is our area of high concentration. This is our area of low concentration, okay? So in passive transport, substances are going to travel from an area where you have a lot of them, high concentration, to where you have a little bit of them. So that is called moving down the concentration gradient. So in this case, passive transport is going to be movement of these molecules in this direction, from where we have a lot of them to where we have a little of them. Now, um, some examples, um, you know, if you take, and there's a picture of this in your textbook, and I'll probably do it as a little example, um, in class on Monday, no, Tuesday when we talk about this, if we just take a beaker of water and put uh, a drop of food coloring in it, does that food coloring drop just stay where it is or does it move out throughout the space? Well, it's going to move out throughout the space. So it is going to diffuse and spread from where it's highly concentrated, where the initial drip went in, and then through space. All right? Same thing if you were to spray... Um, a you know perfume or cologne or air freshener or whatever it is in one corner of the room the people that are closest to that are going to smell it first then eventually it is going to spread out through the entire space of the room so make sure in your notes you draw a movement down a concentration gradient so just draw in this example is good because it actually shows the membrane being semi permeable so there's spots where these things can move Movement here is going to be from where there's a high concentration to where there is a low concentration. All right, so we've talked a lot about passive transport. Uh, diffusion is a type of passive transport. It basically is just random particle movement. So the dye example or the um, food coloring example in the water, the um, spray being sprayed in the corner of the room. That's all random particle movement. That is all diffusion, okay? And usually movement is going to continue until equilibrium occurs. 
Equilibrium is when you're going to have equal concentrations. So you can see in this diagram, high concentration starting off here, low concentration here. We start to have uh, diffusion occur. These molecules are going to start to fill this space. Now over here we've reached equilibrium. An important thing to remember about equilibrium is that the particles don't just stop moving. They're still moving back and forth, but guess what? They're moving back and forth in an equal rate so that you're always going to keep that um, equilibrium or equal concentrations on either side of the membrane. Another example of diffusion, uh, here we have a lump of sugar going into a beaker. The sugar molecules begin to break off. Um, more and more sugar molecules move away, and eventually they're going to become evenly distributed throughout the water. And this works again because water is a great universal solvent. A little throwback to uh, chemistry of life unit there. So I've already talked about this a little bit. Equilibrium is a condition in which the concentration of a substance is equal throughout a space. Even at equilibrium, particles are still going to continue to go back and forth, but they're going to move at an equal rate. It's not like everything just freezes once equilibrium is reached. All right, osmosis is another type of passive transport. Again, any type of passive transport, no energy is required. This special case... Uh, involves the diffusion of water through a selectively permeable membrane. So again, water is always going to go from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So here's our semi-permeable membrane. Here are our water molecules. Bunch of water over here. All right, H2O, H2O, H2O. There are so many of them that they are overlapping one another. Okay, you get the idea. Lots of water molecules, only a few water molecules over here. Water's going to go from where there's more of it to where there is less of it. So in that case, it is going to diffuse that way from high to low. And that occurs just naturally, no energy required. As I mentioned before, this is the one where students mix up a little bit. Just remember, it has the word diffusion in it. Diffusion means passive transport from areas of high to areas of low, okay? Facilitate means to make easier or to help. So what's going to happen is there are certain things that can't easily pass through the, pl the plasma membrane. Um, so they're going to have to go through these transport proteins. So these allow things that cannot easily pass through the membrane to get through, still passive transport, still going down the concentration gradient, still no energy required, but remember our phospholipid bilayer, of course we do. By this point, we could draw this in our sleep. I know I could. Phospholipid bilayer, that would be a transport protein embedded in the membrane. So there's some molecule that's larger, maybe uh, it's glucose, okay, um, can't get through, can't squeeze through the plasma membrane, and there's a high concentration of glucose over here, let's say. High concentration of glucose, low concentration out here. Um, doesn't mean it can't get through, it still needs to get through, it still need to, needs to diffuse through. Here's our high, here's our low, it can't fit through because it's either too large, the properties it has, it is still going to diffuse, but it's going to diffuse through those transport proteins. That is called facilitated diffusion. Here is the book diagram of what I just uh, drew. So here's your high concentration outside the cell, here's your low concentration inside the cell. Sometimes your high and low are going to be flip-flops. Maybe it's a molecule that's highly concentrated inside and low concentration outside. Doesn't matter. This can go in either direction, in or out. Um, but it's always going to go from where there is a high concentration over here to where there's a low concentration over here through, what is this again? A transport protein. All right. All right, and then this last part is just a little bit on the rate of diffusion. The rate meaning how fast 
or slow th diffusion is going to occur. Um, this can be affected by temperature, the size of the molecules, concentration of the molecules, and the type of molecules, whether or not they're polar or nonpolar. The NP refers to nonpolar. I'll show a little example on Tuesday of uh, temperature rate of reaction um, when we're in class.